My earliest, I'm sure, was in the 60s, of course. And Jackie and uh, Holly Woodlawn and Candy Darling, Candy may come in later, but they would wander around the village, around 8th Street, where I was horribly beaten once, a dangerous neighborhood then. But they would go, they would wander around in drag, in the most tasteless drag imaginable. I mean, it was obvious that they were uh, male, not female. And they had these awful, uh, it looked like they were wearing carpets carved out like dresses. And, uh, but I admired them tremendously. I thought, what nerve, you know, to do that. And I always wanted to go in drag as a nun or something. Uh, but I never had the nerve to do it, except Halloween I'd put on a silly one. Uh, so, so they caught my attention immediately. But uh, we, ju we just met at poetry readings, and I think Jackie read poetry. And then I would go to Slugger Ann's once in a while, where her grandmother would be uh, sitting with a little dog, watching TV. And... Uh, but uh, we were always ambulatory. Uh, Jackie, and then, then of course at Max's Kansas City, Jackie would have her special table and I'd have my little table in the corner. So we we were kind of separate. Oh, the cat is up, up the stairs, anyway. <laughs> I wondered what that was. Cat's up in the ceiling. Princey, Princey goes up into the, under there when anyone comes in. Okay. Uh, climbs up and that's funny. Um, <coughs> but then Jackie lived all over the place. I guess I forget whether Jackie had a bicycle or not. I think that was Bridget Berlin. Yeah, that's Bridget. And uh, but but Jackie said that uh, her uncles or uncle used to beat her up and everything and. Uh, so she had this tremendous resistance to her ever going in drag or anything, but Jackie was uh, her own person, mm -hmm. or his own person. And some, of course, sometimes he'd be, uh, well, both he and Candy would try to be Kim Novak or Lana Turner. And then he, then of course in the Lou Reed song, Jackie became James Dean for a day. But actually Jackie was James Dean for, I think, almost a year. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and then just without uh, announcing or anything, went would shift into a whole another gear for a long time. And I don't know whether Jackie. Well, I guess Jackie was on everything. But I thought we most of us. I think were just on speed, which we got from doctors. Well, I was the first gay. That, gay I was one of the early because this tough guy came over, and uh, said, "Are you are you queer? Are you gay?" I said, "Yes," and he immediately gave me a hook and we had a big ring on his finger and punched me. While, uh, while these so-called liberated village people stood around watching and one girl who was dressed like a sort of a lesbian I think, she was the only one who went looking for a cop. These people just stood there and I thought, so this is the enlightened village, forget about it. You know? And I crawled to the hospital and they and I sh they knocked the shit out of me. So the hospital uh, rejected, took, threw me out of the uh, emergency. And uh, when I went back, they tried to fix my nose, and they did a worse job than, uh, you know, I went back a week later, and, and the doctor said, you should have been here a week ago. And, uh, well, well uh, that was the attitude of the hospitals towards uh, anything, anyone gay or suspect. Uh, they, doctors, doctors had prejudices, and they were horrendous. They destroyed, I haven't breathed through my nose in uh, 50 years, 40 years. I don't know. It's just a delightful presence, presence at Max's. It always, uh, it, and Mickey Ruskin was so fabulous at allowing us all to carry on like crazy. And then and he'd stand at the door, and people would line up after Max's started becoming famous. And he'd he'd only let in certain people according to his mood or how high he was on drugs or whatever. And he'd he'd stop. He would say, this one, you can come in, you can't, he'd keep out some of the most elegant, handsome, attractive people. And I think one night he get, he kept out Janis Joplin, and someone said, that's the greatest, one of the greatest singers in America. 
So he went all over the village looking for her and uh, apologized. And I think Janice came back once or twice. The back room at Max's Kansas City, 17th and Park Avenue South, Manhattan, was the, uh, the interchange for selling stocks and bonds, only people. And at that time, there were, there were maybe only a few hundred really interesting artists in New York. <coughs> and uh, we all met. It was a mixture of artists, some lawyers, and uh, it was quite a mixture. But, but uh, Mickey generally kept out any business types. And the back room was uh, uh, just a haven. For the, the wildest people went in the back, the, the serious, ambitious artists like John Chamberlain, or the serious drinkers were up front, sort of. And, and John Chamberlain would get in battles with Neil Williams and stuff like that. But in the back, we just, uh, we, were, we, we were just having fun. We weren't that serious, I think. Although, although of course, everyone was checking each other out. I suppose it was like the Star Club, <laughs> only downtown. <laughs> But you'd, you'd, you'd say you'd gossip down at Max's, and then if you went uptown, like I used to go up to Nell's sometimes, you could, you'd be quoted within an hour. They would quote what you said downtown at Max's. It, I forget the focal point uptown. Uh, and I, I, it wasn't Elaine's, uh, or was it? I don't know. The, the whole, all my life is now a panorama. It's quite, I'm an <laughs> abstract and impressionist painter. <coughs> I must say, when I went to, to view the body at the tiny little funeral home, I thought Jackie was... The, the, the embalmer did the greatest job I've ever seen. Because I thought Jackie was... And had all of us this Mona Lisa smile. And I thought Jackie was, was playing a joke. And I had to just stare, stand there staring the uh, longest time before I realized it was for real. Well, who that embalmer was, my God. Madame Tussauds should hire them.